Welcome everyone to the Gravel Trap Podcast. This is episode one. This is where we will be talking about F1. Um, this has been many, many months and years in the making. And finally, we are here. I just want to thank everyone that has pushed me to actually make this podcast. We will be having guests in the future. The main reason I wanted to start this F1 podcast is... Obviously, we're doing gravel trap events at the Junction Mall. Check us out uh, in conjunction with the Sultan Experience. Um, we try and tend to do the 4 p.m. races. But there's these races that just disappear, South, like the China, Japan, in between there, what happens? And uh, starting the Japan one, we will be doing a live stream. So if you guys are awake on Sunday at 7, 8 a.m., whatever time it is, you can join me on a live stream on YouTube. Um... Maybe on TikTok as well. But yeah, we watch the race together because yo, yo, waking up at that time is tough. Um, and then again, I've been watching F1 for so many years. But like over the last maybe two, three years, I've just been lagging behind in terms of actually following the sport in a very intricate and, and you know, like technical way. And then last year, I was like, ah, this is my year. Then you start doing the events and you're like, yo, bro. I actually can't do the events and actually have time to still watch this thing on a technical basis and still do other sports and stuff. So I'm holding myself accountable this year and I'm going to watch every single race and I'm going to be super analytical about it. I'm back to making F1 notes. Like if you guys can see, for those of you on YouTube, there's like a piece of paper here that is just like highlighted the... Sorry, I, I have a I have a sensor button here, and I always I can never find it. Highlighted the <laughs> yes, it's highlighted the <laughs> out. <laughs> I just wanted to do that. I I guys 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 guys, it's me having fun. F one podcast, gravel trap podcast. If um you guys haven't checked us out, uh, this is a box to box production. We do events at the Junction Mall where we do live watch parties for F one and um. And if there's football after, we also watch the football, you know. Um, if you if you if you if you can spot the match, you know, I'm spotting a gravel trap t-shirt. Hoodie's coming soon as well. So if you're interested, hit me up. I'm going to make uh, we're going to make a few fast like see who um obviously I know everyone will want, but I will just get a few for giveaways fast. Just do a few giveaways here on the show. So tune in. Um, you never know. Q quizzes run everywhere. We even do a gravel trap interactive quiz on location which we do on the big screen, and people just loved it, loved it, loved it. So, yeah, make sure you watch this Australian GP. Keep keep tabs because a lot of this race and the next race Japan are going to count towards our next um, gravel trap event. Um, and there's Miami as well before we do Italian GP. Emilio, R Emilia Romagna GP, Italy. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Um, Australian GP, this was eventful. I have a soft spot for Australian GP. Um, it's the only GP I've ever attended, luckily, in Melbourne. Um, Melbourne is one of those dope ass cities. Like Melbourne is just Melbourne is just beautiful, man. Like to me, because I'm a Queenslander and I'm from Brisbane. I'm a breezy boy. Um, I was gonna say born and raised, but that's a lie. Lived there for a number of years. But Brisbane is always top of the list. The city that comes closest to me in terms of Australian cities, definitely Melbourne. Melbourne is in second place. Um, I just, and being a Queenslander, you hate everything about New South Wales. I not really hate, it's just a rivalry that's there. So I can't put them so high up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a nice city. Sydney is a nice city, I guess. Um, Adelaide is now Shags. In as much as Brisbane is shags, Adelaide is just far. I'm sorry, Roma. I am sorry, but Adelaide is just far. I I have friends in Adelaide who are just going to kill me for that. Um, and then Path now is now Mashinani. There's shags and Mashinani. Path is Mashinani. But yeah, Australian GP. Um, obviously, uh, your boy Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz. Hey, Kingereza, Kiswahili, Kigumu. Carlos Sainz uh, came away with the victory there. Um, man, this dude two weeks ago was getting his appendix removed. And then literally like, was it 16 days later, the boys on the podium getting first place. Getting first place. Um, 
and I still believe, right? Which I think all of you believe as well, apart from mm, Max fans and Red Bull fans, that had even had Max stayed in this race, it was still going to be a close one. Because Science actually passed him before the whole issue started, but we don't know. Maybe this was something that uh, Max had been dealing with earlier. Um, yeah, his right rear caught fire. Uh, the brake got f- caught fire, and then um, it melted the tire into the into the wheels. So it was so wild. Um, this is the epitome of engineering. So for you to see such things happen, like it looks nasty, but then when you look at the after, it's like that's the part where I always wish I was part of F one, like the part of the problem solving um, uh, case, like trying to see what the issue is and how we can rectify it, yeah? So you're just looking at a wreck and be like, oh, this is what happened, this is what happened. Like that troubleshooting bit of F1 and just science in general and stuff, like it's just so fascinating to me. Like I wish if I had a chance, that was some, that's something that I wish I would I would, I would, would have done or been a part of. Um, this was the first mechanical failure for Max in 43 races, 43 races since Emilia Romagna in 2022. In fact, um, no, that's for three. The forty-three races started with Emilia Romagna, but the last time he actually this happened to him, I think, was Australia in twenty twenty-three. If I'm not wrong, um, which is insane because <laughs> um, forty-three races is a long time, and forty-three consecutive finishes is a long, long, long time. So it was. I, I think F one needed this. F one needed one of those moments where it's not all about Max. We already won the first two races, and it's actually funny that we've had two. Races already, we've had Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, but it feels like this is the first race of the season, you know? Like, <laughs> the drama, like, this is the first time where it's like, yo, this is the first race of the season. Which is funny, because Australia used to be the first race of the season, so... It's like we're back there. It's like we're back there. Um, a few things I noticed about this race, actually. Like, it was... Um, the broad- Let me start with the broadcast. There was a point where once the race ended, they just cut to a green screen in the studio with Naomi Schiff. Shout out to Naomi Schiff, by the way. She's, uh, she's a badass. She's a legend. She's a former driver. Um, she really knows her stuff. She knows that like, she can really break down um, scenarios, right? Like, I remember when Oliver Behrman was last, uh, for the last race, when he had to come in for signs, was going in and she was really just detailing how her experience was the first time she got into a car of that level, what you should expect, um, telling us like the toughest thing is not really the car because you've been driving all your life from GP cutting days and all of that. It's the, it's the, it's the, like you're in a paddock and everyone knows what they're doing and you look like the one who doesn't know what you're doing, you know, like she really is a good analyst. Um, and on top of that, she has African roots. I think she's like Rondi's something. Um, and she's cute. Like, she's she's just, like, so dope. Like, I just I just love her energy, her passion for the sport. Um, and her commitment to waking up early and watching this race. When I saw this green skin, I was like, ah, there's no way she's at the location. And she's normally at the location for all these races. So that was a bit weird to see Sky just cutting to a green screen and taking to the studio. Um, yeah. And then, um, of course, the biggest thing we're going to talk about is science. Science... Again, 16 days ago, the boy was in a hospital bed, just had an appendix removed, um, and now he's winning the Australian GP. It's it's hilarious, and I'm 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 curious to see how many you know people like Hamilton, man, Hamilton. How many appendix appendices do you still have? Your appendix? I I think you need to see a visit. You need to see a visit to. You need to see a visit to a doctor soon because. That might be the only way, because Hamilton just had one of the worst races I've ever... I don't even worst races, just the... Okay, I don't say worst races. He had one of the most weird weekends ever since qualifying. Like, him getting knocked out in Q2, just not believing in the car, which, to me, doesn't make sense. At the beginning of the season, it was like, this guy was so confident that the car was going to do well and all of that, you know? So, for him to get to this point where... um the guy just has no belief in the Mercedes. And the mas- there was, there was, there was, the Mercedes, there was two, um, yeah, two, D- two, two Mercedes DNFs. So obviously Russell at the end there was just, I, bro, I don't even know. Um, but yeah, um, Alonso was actually demoted to P8 and given a 20-second penalty for the late race incident involving George Russell. 
and has also been handed three penalty points. I guess those are three penalty points to his driver's license, to his F1 license, his pro license, I think. Um, that was, that was yeah, that, that crash was nasty. And when you see the car and you see the wreck and the position it's in, it reminds me of Saddam. I guess I need to share this video with you guys. I it reminds me of that Saddam video. There was a guy who was parked in a ditch and then Saddam rolls up to me and he's like, Hey, that mona me park up. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Saddam, shout out to Saddam. Um yeah, like it's 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 it was it was it was so it it like and the thing is I I wouldn't even lie to you guys, I was half asleep. At that point it was like I'm lap fifty eight, ah signs has won. One eye started closing, I was half asleep. And then I just said, oh, I just had uh, uh what's his name? Uh Crofty. Just like, ah, ah so just, and you know that high pitched voice. So I turn around, I open my eyes, and I'm like, oh shit, why is Russell in that position? And then you see how the accident happens, and it's like, dude, the car is just, the tires made the car flip, and the car just stayed there. And if you know anything about F1 cars, F1 cars hate going off the ground. They're not made to fly <laughs> or go off the ground. So once they do that, like the downforce and like everything just messed. So for you to go and actually stay in that position, was actually quite a weird position to be in. So, again, problem solving. This is one of those things the engineering team is not going to sleep and they're just going to wonder, like, what, like how? I mean, obviously, you can see how the tires... It's it's almost like a freak scenario, but still, something that we don't see as much in, um, in F1. As I sip my tea, my Kericho... Hey, I should not be promoting brands like this. But anyway, it's Gericho Gold. I love tea, guys. If you don't know, I still love tea. Um, that will always be my thing, you know? Always be my thing. Um, yeah, so then that's a DNF for Mercedes. And considering you have two Mercedeses and one Red Bull in the top 10 that don't finish, Alex Albon. Alex Albon. We need to speak about Alex Albon. Albon, from the beginning of this race, right? Uh, was um, he crashed his car. So then he was given Logan's, Logan Sargent's uh, car for the remainder of the weekend. Um, Albon's chassis was heavily damaged during FP1 and that third one was unavailable. So Sargent had to sit out the whole F1 um, Australian Open GB. And dude, there's no way Mercedes, two Mercedes are missing and one um, Red Bull Maxis is not there. And dude, you don't even get points. Like, you don't even get in the points. That is wild. That is insane. Like, dude. And, and we need to give a shout out to Sergeant as well. Like, that must be so bad. Like, dude, you were just chilling. You did your thing. So, like, you... The... the I don't know how to put this. The way he's... He's rewarded... <laughs> For being solid and not crashing by not participating in the race. Like, it's it's messed up. I kind of get it. Like, lead driver, you have to give them better chance of getting you points. I get all of that. But still, it's... You got to feel for Sergeant, man. Um, and I think for the main... Um, all of you guys think that um, signs winning was the highlight of the weekend. Let me tell you guys, the highlight of this weekend. The highlight of this weekend is none other than Haas getting... Both cars in the top 10. So, if you look at the top 10, we can see both Nico Hallenberg and K-Mag in 9th and 10th position. We've somehow made it in the top 10. We got both cars in the points. Both cars are better than Mercedes. Both cars are above Mercedes in this, <laughs> in this, uh, in the Australia GP. That is wild. That is insane. Like, at some point during the weekend when I was watching qualifying, I was like, dude, we are actually just useless. Um, for those of or the, for those of you that don't know, um, out in the streets, out in the F1 streets, they call me Jay Haas. That is my F1 name and I stick to it and I until I'm not going to change it on X as well. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. But if you think about it, actually, J Haas is a cool name, right? Like, it's actually dope double entendre right there. It's J H A A S. J hyphen H A A S. Guys, and now the person who gave me that name, I know who you are. I'm not shouting you out because I want people to believe that I came up with it. But now that I've said that, now you guys know that I didn't come up with it. Damn. Damn. Um, 
Yeah, man. Both horses uh, in the points. Komatsu turnaround is 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 real. Is real. Um, and then speaking of us and current and former house people, Gunter, 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 we need to have a discussion, man. What? How are they? How did they get Gunter to get doing? Start doing interviews um, um, of in the paddock. Like this guy was interviewing Charles Leclerc, and Leclerc could not understand a single word that he was that was coming out of his mouth. Like at some point he said, "What did he say?" He said, "Have a good evening party," and then. Um, um, what's his name? Leclerc, yes. Leclerc is just looking at him and he's like, dude, <laughs> what did you just say? Like, how do you get this person with the heaviest accent, right? The heaviest accent. I'm trying to load up this um, interview real quick so that I can, I can, I can, you guys can have a listen. Um, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I can watch the best we can do. I, I saw Didier Dennis say things you can attack Carlos, or was it always uh, pretty sure that you cannot get to him, but you could hold off the McLarens? <laughs> At any stage. Could you if you can't hear, he's in the back saying, sorry? Did you feel that you can attack Carlos, or was he uh, uh, too, far, uh, too far ahead? Not, not really, because in the first stint, we had to protect behind, so we had to stop a bit earlier, and then from that moment onwards, uh, Carlos was very fast. And with, uh, with my tires, I was struggling. So I, I think that as soon as we stopped uh, at the first stop, then for me, it was it was clear. But again, Carlos has done a better job all weekend. So uh, I mean, at least from qualifying to the race, and he definitely deserves that victory. So uh, I'm really happy for him. I'm really happy for the team. It's really good points. Uh, we came into the weekend telling ourselves that we need to maximize our points, and there's nothing we could have done better. So really happy about it. Also, Leclerc was ready to give long answers so that this guy doesn't ask another question. Uh, here's the funny part. I wish you a nice evening fasting with the boys. I wish you a good evening fasting with the boys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. That was so awkward and cringe. Like, the guy is like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, dude, I, I can't hear you. I can't understand those that are coming out of your mouth. That was quite funny. That was actually quite hilarious. Um... I have a bone to pick with F1 TV. Guys, I know I'm just dropping points. Let me just drop out. Let me, I'm just dropping points. I, I just hit my hand on the mic. I'm just dropping points today. Again, I don't know how the format of this podcast is going to look like, but you will just have to take it. <laughs> um, what's his name? Um, sorry, F1 TV. F1 TV. F1 TV has this feature where when, you're, when, you, when you get into the app, you, there's either watch from the start or watch live, right? And when you click watch from start... It, it kept on bringing live. So, like, if you haven't watched the race and you want to watch from the start and you're like, okay, I have kept away from everything and I want to watch it. Um, this happened to me, I think, with the Bahrain GP because I wanted to watch it again. We were hosting, but I wanted to watch it again. I knew who won and all of that, but, like, I just wanted to watch it from the start. It takes you all the way to the end, like, the live stream. I'm like, no, that's whatever I want. And I actually popped into Twitter and Reddit and I could see people actually complaining about this, Yeah. So people have, obviously, they value their sleep. You wake up at like 8 in the morning, 9 in the morning, I want to watch from the start. When you click watch from the start, it takes you straight to signs on the podium. So it spoils everything. Actually, it was just, it, it, yeah, man, F1 TV, you need to get your stuff sorted, man. Because, I mean, they're paying customers and people want to actually enjoy the experience. Um, personally, I've never had an issue with F1 TV the last two years I've used it, but... Um, this is just something. It's just feedback, to be honest. It's not really a big complaint because, honestly, it would have been a complaint if I hadn't watched the race and I did the watch live. I would have not been happy. I would have been mad. But, yeah, just something that I'm seeing from fans out here and, yeah, a bit of feedback to F1 TV. Um, again, yeah, this entire race was just worth it. Um, now, I want to just get into the race a bit. Wow, eight how many minutes has it been? I haven't even talked about the race. 18 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, a few things like Hamilton starting the race on softs. That was, I don't know, a bit of a weird call considering how the um, graining on the track was. The tire degradation was intense. So for him to start on, soft, start on softs was a bit of a weird call. But again, when he started the race, he went up one position. Um, obviously, Perez had a three-place penalty from qualifying. Um, so yeah, he was started, he started three positions back. Um, and one thing we didn't expect from the beginning is Max to actually fly from the get go because, 
um, all the weekend long, we knew that they were having everyone was having issues with tire degradation. So, what ma, what uh, Red Bull did is that they put more downforce to the front of the car um, to try and save the tires. But in return, that kind of really just messed up the braking, you know. And I, I guess that's where most of the issues came from. So at first, it was more of a sus- we suspected suspension and all of that, but it was a brake issue. Um, and after that happened to him, and he had to retire we were all wondering, like, is this also going to happen to Sergio Perez, Checo? Because um, I always say Perez with a French accent. Um, yeah, because, I mean, the cars were tuned more or less the same way. So, um, yeah, it, 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 it was... If it happened, we would have been surprised. So <laughs> it, it, it just meant he had to drive a bit more, in a, in a bit more of a cautious manner. Um, this is Perez now. Um, obviously, as I said earlier, Sainz taking the lead in lap two was quite immense. Like, he actually pulled a move. But then, if you look at the replay, it, it's like, you could see, like, something just gave in for Max. And he really tried, really tried to hold it on. And then, by the time he was getting to lap three, he was, he was done. Um, he couldn't go anymore. Um, then, after lap eight, that's when Hamilton decided to actually change his tires. Um, and then he went for the hards. Um... The graining on the tires was insane. Um, like, the mediums were not performing. They're just not doing it. They're not cutting it. Uh, I think Russell had uh, mediums as well, and he pitted on lap nine. Um, Hamilton had soft, and he pitted on lap eight. So, like, it, you can just see, like, the, the tires were just not for it. Uh, um, around that lap 10 area is when Science was like, all right, cool, I'm, I, I'm getting clear air. Um, there's a big space between me and second place, like, let's get some air. He's like, let's open the gap. He tells his team that, and he's like, all right, cool, yeah, let's do it. Um, actually, I want to give a, a, also a big shout-out to Ferrari because um, on this race weekend, like, we've all known Ferraris to mess up here and there, but we also need to give them props. Like, the calling on the strategy was quite, quite dope this weekend. Um, Carlos drove quite well. Um, Charles Leclerc managed to actually hold the McLarens back and maintain that gap, you know. Um, and you can see how how much it was how much it was a, hey, how much it was a team effort because even how they were singing the Italian anthem after after the race you know one two um, in Australia with Max the clear favorite having Max having gotten pole um, yeah I just want to give also a big shout out to the Ferrari team for a solid 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 um, outing then obviously um, another thing in this race is that the undercut was quite powerful. Um, you could see how people were really, if someone else pitted before you and knowing the graining. So the undercut is when someone is, someone is, behind, someone is behind you, let's say you're number three and, some, and someone else is number four. I hope I explained this well. Um, and then when you're at number four, you pit before number three. And because the degradation of their tires is a bit much, they don't do that lap as quick as they should. So by the time they're pitting and they come out, they come out behind you, right? So you've basically done an undercut. And then overcut is the opposite. Or it could be the other way. I don't know. I could have messed it up. But yeah, basically that's the premise. The premise is you pit and then when, when, when once you pit and you come out, you're on fresh tires as the other person is degrading their tires on their last two, three laps of their old tire. Um, and hopefully they don't, they stay out. They, they do their subsequent laps slower and you do, a, you do yours slower than they've been doing. And then you do, as, you do yours faster. Obviously you'll have to because you have fresher tires. And then when, when they come out, they come out behind you. So that's an undercut. So it was quite powerful in this race, simply because of the graining of the tires. The tires were degrading quite quickly in 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 um, at Albert Park. And then um, the funny another funniest part about this. Um, oh, even Perez actually said that um, they overdid the front. So we were like, oh, what does that mean? Okay, we knew what that means, but. We we suspected that. Um, that's that's when you start suspecting. Not we we. That's when you could have started suspecting that he also had the same settings as uh, Max in that sense, and he, he was just being careful. Uh, time management became a big big deal. Um, another thing, Mercedes needs to stop talking about Red Bull cars. Both of them spoke about Red Bull cars, and both of them didn't finish. Hamilton's was hilarious because he literally said he when Perez came out. So Perez came out, and then Hamilton. Just so Perez came out of the pits and just went in front of Hamilton. So there's like a split second when your tires are warmer, obviously. The other person's tires are not as warm. So as he's fighting for grip, you have a chance to pass them. And Hamilton tried a move or two in those two corners and and then just couldn't do it. And Perez pulled away. And then Hamilton is like, yo, 
um, that car is fast. <laughs> like that's that's all he said. It was quite hilarious the way he said it. He said it in a very nonchalant way. Science pits and like 20 seconds later, Hamilton just starts get, getting engine failure. And I'm like, dude, did you get engine failure because you're trying to keep up with this guy or what happened? But engine failure just happens. Again, I can't remember the last time Mercedes got an engine failure simply because they have been so consistent over the last few years. Let me tell you, the years when we used to watch F1, like back in the day, in the late 2000s, engine failure was a big, like, not a big deal, but it was a common thing. Every week, someone got an engine failure, right? Like, there are times of Ron, uh, Ross, Bron, GP, and all of that stuff. Like, engine failures were quite common, I feel. Um, I'd actually have to look up on that. But I just feel they're a bit more common. Nowadays, they're not that common, especially for the top cars, right? So, you can see it's someone like Max went 43 races without engine failure. I don't know. Hamilton went almost seven years without engine failure. Well, not seven years. But for seven years, he really dominated. Engine failure was not a thing for Mercedes, you know? Um, epitome of engineering, like it's just a different level of engineering. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd also be curious to know when the last time Hamilton or how many engine failures he's had over the past like ten years. I don't think there are many. Um, then obviously his car got stuck in a very weird area, so Alonso had to. Um, oh sorry, then they had to bring in the virtual safety car and the safety car, and that's when Alonso decided to pit. His timing was just impeccable. Um, <laughs> Again, when you pit during the virtual safety car at Albert Park, you were going to save yourself, I think, 10 seconds because it was 13 seconds. You lose 13 seconds with the safety car and 23 seconds on the normal um, lap. And then Gasly took advantage of that time as well. At this point, Ferrari were looking really good and they were really looking at that one, two, you know. Um, then in lap 22, <laughs> Russell is like, he was trying to keep up with, with Perez. So when Perez came and just passed him and he's like, yo, that car is like a rocket ship. Again, we all know what happened to Russell at the end of the race. He also did not finish the race. Um, again, something else I realized. Um, okay, this is something that's just general. In a clockwise circuit, so like when you have a, a circuit that you go clockwise, I think most of them you go clockwise, maybe two or three that you don't go clockwise. In a clockwise circuit, because you're making more right turns than left, your left tire, on the tires on your left side get degraded more. Degraded more. So, Think about it this way. I'm in a car. If I'm turning right, right? If I'm turning right, all the all the car the car is trying to do is the car is trying to push me away to the left. That is where centripetal and centrifugal forces come in. So the car is trying to push me away from where I'm turning. It is up to the tires to hold me in place. The friction, the coefficient of friction and all of that stuff now come into play. That felt nice. Um, so you find that the tires on your left get degraded more on a clockwise circuit. So even at the end of the race, like if you if you saw um, Sainz's car, the degradation <coughs> was quite intense on the left side, quite intense. Um, I think it was Leclerc or Sainz car. Um, yeah, it was quite intense on the left side. Um, and for a, a race track that generally now the degradation is at a higher level, you really have to take care of your left side, especially when you're making those right turns. Um, um, I don't know how that came about, but yeah. Um, then in lap 29, I think McLaren, McLaren did something interesting because Piastri was told to let Lando through. Um, again, this is one of those things that if it was Rosberg and Hamilton, that would never happen. Let who through? For what? Uh, um, but the reason, there was a good reason behind this. Piastri had just pitted in lap 9. Um, Lando had pitted in lap 13. So, um, Lando was, had the fresher tires and he just looked more of, uh, you know, he had a better chance. So it, it was a nice team effort to see them do that. But the Australian fans did not like it at all. Did not like it at all. They even booed. Because Piastri is their boy. Piastri is Australian, like from Stryer. How do you do that to a Stryer? Um, yeah. And then um, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Yeah. And it's the next thing that was really interesting was um, Leclerc coming out just ahead of Perez and Alonso in lap 32, made a bit of an interesting grace between them. Um, but the thing is, once I feel like once Perez managed to get ahead of um, Alonso and Russell, he was just too far back. Th this is the thing about Checo. Checo really needs to be careful this season. I believed that this was going to be Checo's year of actually showing people, in as much as he was not great last year, he still finished second, right? He finished, did he finish second? Yeah, he did finish second um, in the construct, in the in the driver's championship. Um, 
Yeah, he did finish second, but it almost felt like at times he really wasn't that great, especially towards the end of the season, not finishing races, um, not um, being there. Like whenever Max was getting one, he needs to be like about two or three there just to make his life easier, you know? So I always felt like since the beginning of the season, this is the year Leclerc needs to really show this because to be honest, there is, um, when does Leclerc's contract end actually? Um, there's a boy out here who's who doesn't have an appendix and doesn't have a team either for next year. And he's looking like he's looking like he's he's he might even take up that seat, you know. Like, can you imagine uh Checo, a signs and uh Verstappen um one two, you know, for for Red Bull? Like that's that's that that would be wild. In as much as I think science is proving to us that he's actually capable of being a one, you know. And this is the one thing Ferrari did, like they by signing two younger drivers, they didn't have oh man. Um Perez has already signed his extended his Red Bull contract. <laughs> yep. Yep, 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 yep. I think so. I think Perez has signed his contract, so Okay, that's what I'm seeing here. So if that's the case, then yeah. But I really feel like Chico needs to... This, this race is where Max doesn't act, does actually... He at least needs to get a podium, you know? Um, yeah, but ever since after that, yeah, Sainz were just very, very comfortable. Like, Ferraris were just looking really good. Um, um, and then McLaren as well. I feel like McLaren is really banging on that door. They're just they're just a bit behind um, Red Bull and Ferrari. But ever since they got those uh, uh, upgrades, like towards the middle of last year, they've just been on a different level. But now you now you now your competition is at the top, right? It was now it was between them and Mercedes, like that middle area, Aston Martin for so, for a while. But they're clearly ahead of the Mercedes, so. For them, their target is the one, um, one and two. That's Red Bull and uh, Ferrari. In the case of um, Piastri, Piastri had an amazing um, rookie season last year, of course, but he is yet to win an F1 championship, uh, F1 race. So I think that's one of the things that he has to do this year just to make them a bit of a stronger unit. At this point, Norris is still the better driver, the more experienced driver, but yeah. Um, yeah. Signs won this race. Uh, the one thing I say about Signs, and I I got a very good appreciation of F1 drivers because it's very rare you see a kid like Oliver Behrman, the 18 year old, the English kid who came on with a few hours warning to come and actually go through qualifying and actually race in Signs' car. And I think he got 10th or 11th, right? Uh, no, 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 no. He did he did he did a bit better. He's ahead of Hamilton, but <laughs> um. The same car ends up winning the race this year. It just shows you how much of you you really need to we really need to value the driver's capabilities, right? Like Sainz is actually a solid driver. Like he's actually really good. And I just got a new this was just me. I just got a newfound appreciation for um Sainz and what he does because it's not easy. It's actually not easy to be um to come out at the top as um with the with someone like Red Bull in the same uh, actually someone like Max Verstappen in the same era as you, you know it's almost like that come moment of when Hamilton was dominating you are in a period where there's one person who's really dominant and then almost like um who else Steph Curry LeBron you know you're in an era yes you're really good but you're just in an era when there are just people who are just of a different ilk. So, yeah, you really need to step up, yeah? Um, um, yeah, then to end the race, of course, signs telling Charles to come closer so that they can celebrate together. That was really dope. Uh, this was their first one, too. Uh, sorry, this is the first win since uh, Singapore in 23 for signs. Uh, Piastri got a standing ovation from the Stryans in Albert Park. Um, again, that Russell's car just being in a weird position at the end of the race was it was uh, like that accident was just quite quite weird. Um, yeah, man, Haas are now tied with uh, RB 
man, like, have, have you guys realized that they refuse to say their full name on the broadcast? Visa Cash App RB, like they just said, nah, we're not saying all of that stuff. Um, even on the official page, it just says RB Honda RBBT, like that's it. Like they're like Z. We're not saying the whole thing. Um, yeah, so that was good for us. Um, mm, 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 mm. So now there are seventh place ahead of the Williams, Kick Sauber, and Alpine. Then Aston Martin in fifth place, Mercedes in fourth, um, McLaren third, Ferrari second, and Red Bull in first place. And then you look at the Drivers' Championship, we have Marks at the top with 51 points. Leclerc goes up to 47 points, moves up ahead of Perez. Um, and then Sainz gets 40 points. Now he's in fourth place. He's gone up two places. He's gone up ahead of Norris and Piastri. Um, Russell is the biggest loser this week. Gone down three places to seventh with 18 points. Um, Stroll, has also got, Stroll has also gone up to three places to ninth place with nine points. And Hamilton has dropped to 10th um, with eight points. So, yeah, it's 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 it looks like Verstappen are not getting any points. That's good. Keeps them tight at the top. You do, we also don't want a boring F1 this year. Um, I just can't wait to see a Haas in this top 10. Life, life will be so good. Um, yeah, and that was the Australian GP. Um, before we call it uh, a podcast for episode one, I want to take you guys through our box-to-box -box fantasy for F1. Um, for those of you who don't know, we have an F1 box-to-box -box fantasy league. Uh, this is the league code on the screen. Uh, you can join. Um, uh, it wasn't a great week. Uh, we did our team, our box-to-box -box team got 40 points. Aston Martin, 13. Alpine, 1 point. Ocon, Ricardo, Albon, 0 points. Everyone, Leclerc, 6 points. And Max Verstappen, our turbo driver, gave us 20 points. Um, looking at the Australian GP for this week, we are uh, we were in ninth place out of everyone in this um, league for this race. And then in the league, we are in 11th place with 273 points. Gitegi is still at the top with 526. Dennis in second place with 453. And Venant Eldoret Express with 437 in third place. And that is our box-to-box fantasy for f1 guys if you want to join here is the code on the screen p61 p6 i e s h r 6 y 0 1 and i'll also put a link in the description yo this is your boy in Degs. this has been the gravel trap podcast episode one australian gp debrief and i will see you later japan gp on the 7th of april peace Boom.